since it turned to dark and the birds have gone their way, the moonlight cast near is stark as the sunlight drifts away. The shadows spin in an earthly scene by the tapestries on the wall, and through the house hailed the shuddered screams of the ghosts who walk the halls. Was that Lord Byron or perhaps T.S. Eliot? Neither, my good fellow. It was a vandal, I should be happy to say. Welcome to Creature Features. This is Livingston, that is Tangella, and I would be your resident host and poet, Vincent. The motivation for my waxing nostalgic about the night and darkness is because tonight we'll be sharing with you a most wonderful film, 2017's Boy in the Dark, a short film about what happens to a young lad with a vivid imagination. And what better guest could we have for such a wonderful film than the man who actually created this remarkable piece? Joining us again for the first time will be filmmaker Jason Ragusta. He'll tell us what it was like to make Boy in the Dark, and he'll stay with us for our main feature, which is 1944's The Monster Maker. I suspect that the first film will be a great deal better than the second. No doubt, Livingston. However, taking into consideration Tangella's imaginative application of science, I think it would lend one to believe that it is the latter film she will prefer. Obviously. So stay with us for yet another amazing episode of Creature Features! Stay tuned. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. The Russian sleep experiment took the lives of five test subjects, enemies of the state. It was a week-long human conditioning experiment that went horribly wrong. You can find out what happened to these human guinea pigs, as well as many other conspiracies, urban legends, and tales of terror at www.scarystorytime.com. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Alexa, Kindle, and other distribution streams of podcasts and videos. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Calling all monster lovers, fright fans, and space travelers. Finally, there's a convention for you. Creatures Con is coming to the San Ramon Marriott Sunday, August 12th. Our seventh big year has more dealers, more guests, more fun than ever before. Here's just a sample of what you'll see at Creatures Con. Special tributes to 50 years of Planet of the Apes and the film that built a genre, Night of the Living Dead. Mega Chiller Theater, one movie, a whole host of horror hosts, the Monster Movie Quiz, the experts answer the questions, and you win the prizes. The Creatures Con Costume Contest with a $100 cash prize, and more, much more than ever before. If you love classic horror and sci-fi, horror hosts, and monster kid stuff, then Creatures Con is the place for you. Creatures Con, Sunday, August 12th at the San Ramon Marriott. For tickets and info, go to CreaturesCon.com. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned.
Welcome to Creature Features. Have we got a show for you? We got back Jason Regusta. You know, he's been on the show before and you did quite well, I think. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it well, no, you actually performed quite well. Oh, thank you. No, usually when we do directors and things like that, filmmakers, it's like they're, they're good behind the camera. They're not very good in front, but he's like an expert. I think he should be an actor. I, I did Something spend like a little time acting. All right. Well, that explains it. So we're going to show his film, The Boy in the Dark, right? Absolutely. No, the. Is it just Boy in the Dark? Um, Boy in the Dark. Boy in the Dark. No, yeah. the. Because there might be more than one eventually if you make a sequel. This is a fantastic film, and we're going to talk all about it, but we're, we've, we're going to be short on time. We've got to run it now. So you watch this film. You're going to love it. We'll be back after the break. Time for bed. It's a school night, Jay. Finish tomorrow. Get some sleep.
dude. Come here. Jake? Whoa, whoa, what's going on, Jake? Nothing. Jake! Let's get you cleaned up. You're not drawing tonight, bud? So much easier for your mother to talk about. I just, I, I don't know what happened out there. You know, I wasn't there, but um, I think we need to talk about it. for this?
You all right, bud? Favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location, we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it.
watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. In case you missed the last segment, you missed a wonderful film created by this man, Boy in the Dark. He's not the Boy in the Dark. The film was Boy in the Dark. He is Jason Regusta. Yes. That was incredible. Thank you so much. How long did it take you to make that film? Actually, it was very quick. Um, from the time that I had written it, um, we had already done an Indiegogo and raised the money and had shot it within about three months. Three months. And then and it ran about 17 minutes, right? 13 minutes and... 27 seconds 13 minutes and 27 seconds well you got a lot of story in that amount of time and and the effects were incredible oh thank you so much i actually did most of them myself um because we we actually had some a studio that was supposed to do it and then that didn't work out which kind of drew out our post but then i ended up just buckling down and i I actually shot smoke plates in my apartment. Smoke plates, what's that? Um, so I had like a tube and like, I got some uh, cigarettes and I was blowing smoke through a tube and having it rise up. And so it was white smoke in front of black, but then I inverted it in so post. So you used practical effects. That's right, yeah, with you know, some digital composite. I've seen fake smoke, it doesn't look that good. No, it doesn't look good. But so, but like how many people did it take to make this film? Oh, we had a crew of about maybe 20 to 30 people. 20 to 30 people you know yeah. we're lucky if we could get two people to come do this show yeah. so you guys know, do a great job with two people i think so. i think we should like do an indiegogo and that way we can or a patreon patreon ongoing i like that word yeah. it's it's roman i think or it, Greek. it sounds like it yeah. i don't know yeah. all right well we're going to watch another film with you and it is uh the monster maker what? 1944 i believe or 45 oh, okay i think 44 and uh it's an old film, but it's uh, it's it's not bad. So, have you seen it? I'll watch anything with monster in the title. All right, we're going to watch yeah. this monster film, and when we come back, we're going to talk some more with Mr. Jason Regusta about his film Boy in the Dark. So, you guys stay with us.
associate with me. Why, of course, dear. Box keeps staring at me. Let's go back into bed during the intermission. All right. like seeing the dead return to life. I must know who she is. That can do no good. The dead have no place among the living. I shall be the judge of that. Lawrence, for a man your age, you're certainly in the pink. I have to be. Most people don't know it, but giving a piano recital requires the stamina of a marathon runner. Hey, Judd, I think you better give my right forearm muscles another going over. I feel a slight cramp in my index finger. Yes, sir. Hello, Dad. Hello, darling. Hi, Bob. How am I doing? Marvelously. I don't believe I've ever heard you in better form. <laughs> That's because you're home from school, my dear. I was playing for you tonight. Oh, am I glad this engagement ends my concert tour. <laughs> now I can relax, wear old clothes, and let my beard grow. Oh, and devote some time to your only daughter. You know, I feel as if I'd been piano. Uh, 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 don't bite the piano that feel, my darling. <laughs> See where that is, Bob. Yeah. This gentleman would like a minute with Mr. Lawrence. Just a moment. Dr. Igor Markov is waiting to see you. Igor Markov? I don't know the man. I'll tell him to write me for an appointment. Oh, wait a minute, Bob. I've got a few minutes. Let him come in. Come on, dressing gowns yet? I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Anthony Lawrence. That's right, Doctor. What's on your mind? I should like to apologize to this charming young lady for my seeming rudeness. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but go ahead. This is my daughter, Patricia, Dr. Markov. Please forgive me, young lady, for staring so rudely at you, but I really could not help it. Seeing you tonight was quite a shock because... Well, because you are the living image of my wife, Lenore, as she looked... At the time we were married, she was taken away from me under very tragic circumstances. I understand. I accept your apology. Thank you. This will always remain an unforgettable moment in my life. Thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. So nice to have met you. I always appreciate the privilege of meeting a great artist. Thank you, Doctor. And good night. Good night, sir. Funny people, these foreigners. Do you suppose Pat really resembles his dear departed, or...? Or is right. That cock and bull story was old in Caesar's day. The nerve of the guy. My dear boy, you've got to get used to other men admiring Pat. She's a very beautiful girl. There's a difference between admiring and ogling. By the way he stared at me, he gave me the jitters. You'll find him in the next box, fishy stare and all. Oh, no, I won't. We're going to hear the rest of this concert from backstage. Then I'll have to get your wrap. You left it in the box. Oh, please do. I'll wait for you here. Oh, Judd, five minutes. We've got to get ready. It seems that the great Dr. Markov failed to make a favorable impression. Temporarily, yes. But there will be many opportunities in the future. Besides, the tall man was not averse to accepting a little gratuity and gave me all the information I needed. Igor, I've risked my life for you. I've kept your secret all these years. Does all this mean nothing to you? Don't I mean anything to you? 
Because of your knowledge of my work, I need you as an assistant. You have never met anything more, and you never shall. Keep that in mind. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV and... I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked, too. It's blocking time! Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Mr. Jason stepped out to take a phone call from his agent, right? Yes. Maybe he's got some good news. Perhaps. It could be bad news. Maybe his agent needs, like, a ride or something. Well, hopefully it's something important and involves lots of money. So we're going to do letters, and we've got a letter from whom, Mr. Livingston? Hey, Dwight. Dwight. Dwight McGowan does not say where he's from, and that's fine. But you know when you guys write us letters, it'd be nice if you told us, just so we can do a call-out to your city. He says, uh, greetings and salutations to my new favorite Saturday night crew. He's talking about us, right? I would imagine so. Mm -hmm. Livingston, the man who makes being a gentleman's gentleman look stylish and cool. He is kind of stylish and cool, isn't he, Tangela? I don't know about cool. What's with the umbrella? It's expecting, a parasol, actually. She's expecting rain or sun. You'll find none of it here. All right, Tangela, a bright smile within the joy of darkness. Well, there's some darkness. I don't know how much joy, but there's, there's a little bit. And then uh, Vincent, my favorite chill yet oh so casually dynamic ex rock star. I, you know, I've never been described this way. That's very kind of you, Dwight. Uh, he goes, I would love for you to show my first Creature Features movie, The Horror of Party Beach. We get lots of requests for this one. Hmm. What can we do? I might have it in the archives. All right, we're going to try, Dwight. Thanks for writing. Next up is a letter from Drumroll, please. <clears throat> Mitchell A. And he says, Hi, Vincent. Last night I was watching your show when, lo and behold, you read my letter on the air. We're reading the same letter twice? Not that It's letter. a different He wrote us twice. All right. Very cool. Thank you. Have you ever considered packaging your shows for syndication and pitching creature features to the likes of Sci-Fi, Netflix, or Amazon Prime? Have oh. we ever done that? Oh, dear, no. That's more work. Well... If, if more people saw it, it might be less work because we could like hire staff instead of having to do everything ourselves. A valid like, point. Like we could put an ad on Craigslist saying, we need a letter reader and writer. Right? And then you wouldn't have to do this. No? All right. But I don't write them. Well, you have to write back. Oh, that. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Elvira was the last horror host to go national in a big way. 
I have no idea, sir. And that was a long time ago. I think the country's ready for something new. Please give my best to Tangela and Livingston. Mitchell sends his best to both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Mitchell. Last letter? Last letter. Oh, it's a short one as well. Mm. He says, uh, this is Paul H. And he says, dear Creature Features, I was wondering if you do any training classes or internships or anything else like this. Tools? What, what will we train him in? House cleaning, perhaps. House cleaning. He needs some help cleaning the house because uh, we lost another maid, right? We did. She was a chambermaid. She was frightened in one of the chambers. Yeah, we've got some issues with this house where spirits, he doesn't think there's any, but I've, I've come to believe. You've seen them, right? She's seen them. It's, it's, it's frightening. I don't know if you'd want to do that, Paul, but uh, we'll keep you in mind. And we got his email address so we can send him back a nice note, right? right. If you wish. Maybe. That's it for letters. If you would like to send us a letter, you know what to do. You send it to this email address here, or you write something on paper, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it and send it here. Either one works for us. We would love to hear from you, good letters and bad. We'll be right back with Jason after the next part of the film. Stay with us. Some flowers for Miss Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you. More flowers for you, Flo. Flowers. Flowers, flowers. Morning, noon, and night. The man must be crazy. Keeps on, I'll hate the sight of them. Have yeah, William take those to the children top still. Right away, miss. to make Dr. Markov stop pestering me. First it was flowers three times a day, and now he's sending notes with them. Now look, I can't stand any more of this. You, you've just got to make him let me alone. Well, the man must be out of his mind. I never heard of such presumption. Now, don't you get upset about it, Pat. I'll take care of Dr. Markov. You just forget about him and let me handle this. What are you going to do, Dad? I'm going to call on our friend and tell him very plainly that his attentions to you are unwelcome, and he'll stop them immediately. You be careful, won't you? <laughs> Careful? What do you mean? Well, you'll probably laugh at me, but when you call on Dr. Markov, will you take Bob with you? Pat, I can take care of myself. But you said yourself he was out of his mind. Did you notice his eyes that night in your dressing room? They, they seemed to stare right through me. <laughs> You've been listening to too many horror radio programs lately. What you need is a good workout on the badminton court. Come on, run along. <laughs> Fear not, fair lady. I shall build the reptile in his den. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anthony Lawrence is here to see you, Doctor. I will see him in a few moments. Oh, and uh, Maxine, you had better relieve me. I'm making a new batch of X-54, and it requires constant watching. I'll be right in, Doctor. Uh, the doctor will see you in a few minutes. Uh, won't you be seated? Thank you.
get back where you belong. I should get rid of that brute. He's always hated me, and I'm, I'm deathly afraid of him. Oh, don't be a fool. He's perfectly safe in that cage. How could he harm you? It is silly. Besides, he's very essential to my work. Now, when uh, that uh, concentrated pituitary boils dry, turn off all the burners. Add some elixir, place it in four cc ampules, and refrigerate them. Yes, Doctor. Watch it closely. See that it continues to boil, but very slowly. Now I must go and talk to Mr. Lawrence. I cannot leave him waiting any longer. Again. This isn't a professional call, Dr. Markov. I've come here on a purely personal matter. Oh. Well, in that case, you'd better come into my private office. Thank you. Ah, uh, won't you sit down? I'll remain standing, if you don't mind. Oh, as you wish. I'll get to the point very quickly, Dr. Markov. I've come here in regard to my daughter, Patricia. Ah, yes, a lovely young woman. And that's beside the point. She doesn't welcome your attentions. I'm forced to ask you to stop annoying her. I'm afraid you are being very insulting. Your persistence has left me no other choice. I've already explained my deep interest in your daughter. Perhaps you thought I was lying. Would you look at this picture? What if there is a resemblance? That doesn't give you the privilege of annoying her. But I am going to marry her. Ma <laughs> I'm amazed at your conceit. I'm warning you, Dr. Markov. Unless you stop annoying my daughter, I shall call the police. Stop, not so fast. Let go of me.
as men tied to the earth. We dream of visiting the stars. As men tied to the stars, we will dream. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. The Russian sleep experiment took the lives of five test subjects, enemies of the state. It was a week-long human conditioning experiment that went horribly wrong. You can find out what happened to these human guinea pigs, as well as many other conspiracies, urban legends, and tales of terror at www.scarystorytime.com. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Alexa, Kindle, and other distribution streams of podcasts and videos. Back to the show, and we are watching The Monster Maker with Mr. Jason Regusta. You know, this film, not much has happened yet. We've got a scientist who has a crush on that other man's daughter. I don't trust him. Yeah, neither do I. We'll see how that develops. But I want to talk about your film. Earlier we showed uh, Boy in the Dark, the film you made. You made it last year, right? Yeah, 2017. That's a wonderful film, wonderful film. And you know, the young actor, he was brilliant. Tony Boy Marin, yes, he was fantastic. That's his actual name? Yeah. It sounds like a nickname. I think now he goes by Tony Marin, now that he's right. gotten older. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah um, he, he was fantastic. You know, he was kind of like my rock on set because right. uh, he was more prepared than any adult actor I've ever worked with. Really? Hit his mark, knew his lines, um, killed it, yeah. You know, children actors, uh, child actors, they, they know how to pretend. They do. We as adults, we, we forget how to do There's that. There's suspension of disbelief there as is, much. There uh, is. They could do it. Yeah. So the makeup on this film was incredible. Yes, yes. Uh, and I think I know who did it. You do. You actually know her very well. Margaret Kerrigan Aldrich. We love her. Um, who is the uh, fantastic queen who runs Pandora FX. Um, just kind of killed it with her team on this film um, and created the Night Terror and uh, Diana and all of our makeup effects. The Spider Woman, Diana. Yeah. Is her name. But it was, it's, it's 
it's gonna give me nightmares. I think. Yeah, it was it was great because you know I'd done like a bunch of drawings of it, and Margaret had been sculpting it over at Pandora, and she'd been working on the teeth with like a Dremel and stuff. Right. But we hadn't seen it all together until we saw it on set for the first time because it was a very expensive process right. to do all that, and it was a very. And it wasn't a mask, right? It was like pieces. Oh no, and it was prosthetics. And yeah, yeah. That must have been a lot um, of work. We actually used um, some. Uh, pre-built uh, RBFX uh, ones for the lower half of the face. And then Margaret did a custom um, piece for the forehead where she sculpted it and cast it into everything and then all made the teeth hand. and everything. Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, imagine if Hollywood now would, would probably do this all with visual effects mm -hmm. and then it'd look like a cartoon. Yours looked absolutely real. Oh, thank you. But I yeah, mean, it looked like an actual thing. It, it definitely was actual. It was great seeing her in person on the set. and. Some of the most uh, fun uh, set pictures actually had to do with her just being so excited about being it. So she was like, this is Margaret. Uh, this is actually Nani uh, Strides who's wearing the makeup. Oh. Yeah. Uh, those were Incredible. some of my favorite uh, behind the scenes photos. Amazing. So. Well, we're going to talk some more about that. But first, we've got to get back to this film. Let's do it. Which I think is going to get better, right? Maybe. We can only hope. We can only hope. I mean, maybe something will happen. Something has to happen. Yeah. Or it's not going to be much of a movie now, yeah. is it? All right, you stay with us. You guys stay with us. We're going to be back, and uh, we're going to talk some more with Jason after this. Pardon me, Miss Lawrence. Dr. Markov's on the telephone for you. Dr. Markov? Oh, say I'm not in. Yes, but he says it's important. He must talk to you concerning your father. My father? I'll talk to him. Hello. Yes, Miss Lawrence speaking. Oh, uh, Miss Lawrence, your father has had a slight attack of vertigo. Yes, he is uh, here in my office. It was probably brought on by overwrought nerves. I was wondering if uh, you had not better come and get him. Is he well? No, 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 not seriously. However, scarcely able to drive his own car. Of course, I could keep him here, or if you wish, I could call an ambulance. Ambulance? Oh, no, I'll be right there. Where is it? Doctor? Uh, Maxine, turn down all the flames to about half. But Dr. Markov, the concentrator is nowhere near dry yet. I know, but it must boil very slowly. All right. So you see, Mr. Lawrence, nobody having witnessed our encounter. I am perfectly willing to keep it a secret. Of course, if you desire to say something about it, I will admit that you threatened me with violence and I was forced to protect myself. It is simply a case of your word against mine. Is this Dr. Markov's residence? Yes. Are you Miss Lawrence? Yes. Come in. The doctor's expecting you. Father! How do you feel? Pat, what are you doing here? Well, Dr. Markov said you were a little indisposed, so I came to drive you home. Are you feeling better now? Yes, yes, much better. You well enough to start? Yes, of course. Steve, help Mr. Lawrence to his car. Now, uh, Miss Lawrence, may I have a word with you? Yes. I uh, think that your father will bear watching. If you notice him developing certain symptoms of... Well, if you notice him acting strangely, I would strongly advise you persuade him to see his doctor. I'll remember. Thank you. 
Yo başka. Have you finished? Yes, I did exactly as you told me. Uh, why are you working on a Formula X-54? I thought you were satisfied with X-53. Not quite. I have succeeded with X-53 in arresting the disease acromegaly. But it will do no more than hold it in check. Come, I will show you. After I injected him with the disease, it was allowed to proceed to this stage. Enlargement of the head, the feet, and so forth. But from the moment I gave him an injection of X53, there has been no change in the condition. Neither progressive nor retrogressive. I have every reason to hope that this new formula will prove to be a complete cure for the disease. Think what it will mean to have the power to control a dread disease like acromegaly. The only living man to have such power. And why are you the only living man to have such power? You know why. Yes, I do. And you're not even a doctor. You stole the name and laboratory notes from the man you killed. He deserved to die. And his death made it possible for me to escape from Europe as the real Dr. Markov. And reap the rewards earned by another man with years of work and study. What I took from him was small repayment for what he tried to take from me. The love of Lenore, my wife, the woman I worshipped. But his love cooled as I knew it would when he looked at her beautiful face and saw the ravages of the hideous disease acromegaly. Did you deliberately inoculate her with that dread disease? I did. I was determined that no other man should try to take her from me. I knew if she were no longer beautiful, no one else would want her. Then I would have her all for myself. I... But she could not stand the sight of her own face. So she killed herself. This is incredible. Only a madman could do a thing like that. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to put you to one town. I'm going to put you to one town. I'm going to put you to one town. You are going no place. You are going no place. Go to your room. Stay there. Good to have you back again with us, Bob. Glad to be back once more, Pat. It's no fun being away from you. I do wish you didn't have to spend so much time out of town. If I didn't, your father would probably get himself a new business manager. You know, it's chiefly on his business I'm away so much. I know. Bob, do you think you could book father for a series of summer concerts? Pat, what are you talking about? If you knew the heavy schedule I booked him for next season, you'd want him to have a good rest. Oh, I do, but he can't seem to rest. I don't know what's gotten into him. He seems to have so much energy. He just can't seem to work at all. Well, let's hope it keeps up. But it can't, Bob. Do you realize that he's up at six every morning? That he walks practically all day long? That, that I can't get him to go to bed at night? I, sometimes I awaken at two or three in the morning. And he's still playing his piano. That's not normal in the past, is it?
Pat, come here. You too, Bob. Doesn't it, doesn't it look as if my fingers were thicker? Well, your hands are swollen. Well, the fingers are anyway. You know, they feel awkward. When did you notice this? The past few days, I felt something coming on. My feet, too, seem enlarged. All my shoes feel tight. Do you suppose you've eaten something that poisoned you? Oh, no, no. I'd, I'd know it if I had. He said if you felt bad, I should persuade you to see a doctor. Who said? Dr. Markov. Markov? Yes. When was that? That day you went to see him about... about a social matter. Oh, rubbish. Why should I see a doctor when I never felt better in my life? Because I want you to, Father. Promise me you'll see Dr. Adams at once. Let me call him now. Nonsense. There's nothing the matter with me, really. I'll tell you what I'll do. If this condition doesn't clear up by tomorrow, I'll drop in to see Dr. Adams just to put your mind at ease. But you won't go. You put it off. Why don't you let me call him now? Because it isn't urgent. Anyway, right now, I feel like going out for a walk. But you've been walking all day. I can't help it. I feel restless and full of energy. What do you make of it, Bob? Oh, perhaps some minor upset. But I would have him checked over by Dr. Adams. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. I'm Crazy Boots Martin. And James the Red. At the NorCal Pirates Festival. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching The Monster Maker with Mr. Jason Regusta, who's kind of a monster maker of his own. I mean, he, he made that wonderful film, Boy in the Dark, that we watched in the first segment. And if you guys missed it, I am sorry to hear that. But uh, this movie we're watching now, we've got uh, some scientific chemicals being created. He's going to cause some trouble with this, isn't he? He goes to great lengths to get, uh, you know, the father's approval in this uh little tryst he's trying to put together this here. This seems like a, a terrible way to do it, but yeah. uh, we'll find out what happens when we get back to the film. But first, let's talk to Jason about what you do. Now, you know, one of the things when I was looking into you online, I Googled you, is uh, you did a TED Talk. I did. It was a TEDx talk, yeah. You know, I, I want to do a TED Talk, but I wouldn't do it about something as lofty as what you do. I'd probably do it about shoes. 
Yeah. Those shoes, yeah. I, I could talk for days to Ted or whoever else is in the audience about uh, shoes. But uh, what was yours all about? I didn't watch it. I watched like one minute of it and uh, I, I did not continue. Still counts. Uh, yeah, so uh, my TEDx talk was about storytelling um, in uh, film, games, and uh, VR. All right. And uh, the beginning of it, strangely enough, the opening of it was a story about my childhood and how when I was a little kid, I had insomnia and an overactive imagination and I was terrified. Do you still have insomnia? I do still have insomnia, but I'm no longer terrified because mm -hmm. what I talk about in it is how I, I made a deal with the monsters in my head and uh, told them that I would draw them if they would protect me. Wait a minute, you're the boy in the dark. I am the boy in the dark, it's true. So this is like an autobiographical film. It's a fictionalized uh, version of, well, of my childhood, is. yes. Right. Yeah. Right. That's incredible. So it was the inspiration for the film? Absolutely, yeah. A friend saw my TEDx talk and then said to me, you should make a short film about that. And I was like, he's right. You had that. to make this film. You had no choice. I, I didn't. Yeah, you had was... to get it out of your system. And do you feel better now? I feel so much better. Yeah. Who needs a therapist when you have a camera, a crew, lots of makeup, and a willing audience to watch it? It's right? true. Well, speaking of willing audiences, I think our audience might want to get back to this film. So let's get back to that. But when we come back, we're going to talk to Jason about what he's doing next, right? You're doing more stuff, right? So much stuff. Yeah. So much stuff. It's all very right, exciting. We're going to hear all about it. So you guys hang on. We'll be back after the break. And how are you feeling today, Mr. Lawrence? Physically, extremely well. And your appetite? Still increasing. Mr. Lawrence, after studying all the results of your laboratory tests, x-rays, metabolism records, I have reached a conclusion. But not being satisfied with my own alone, I called into consultation Dr. Kruger and Dr. Naylor, whose reputation, of course, you know. Yes, certainly. And they, without any hint from me, both came to the same conclusion. Acromegaly. Acromegaly? Yes. It's a very rare disease, glandular in origin, activated by a defective pituitary. Doctor, can't you tell me in plain English what's wrong with me and how serious it is? I'm trying to tell you. You have a glandular disorder, a disorder of the pituitary gland, a disease so rare that medical science knows little about it as yet. Is it fatal? Fatal? Well, not necessarily. It's a progressive disease, enlarges the extremities. It's accompanied by an increasing amount of energy to a fabulous and dangerous degree. Is it curable? Mr. Lawrence, there is but one man, to my knowledge, who knows anything important about acromegaly. He's a specialist in glandular disorders, and I understand has devoted a great deal of research to this particular disease. I urgently suggest that you consult this man, who is in a position to do more for you than any person in the profession. Who is it? Dr. Igor Markov. Dr. Markov? Yes. Do you know him? Yes. Strange you didn't think to consult him. And I've just met him socially. I don't know him socially. But his name ranks among the top names in the profession. His reputation is international. So he is, therefore, the man that you should see, Mr. Lawrence. I'd rather not see Dr. Markov. Isn't there anybody else I can consult? No. He's the only man I know that can help you. He has not seen fit as yet to give out his findings or his method of treatment to the profession. So therefore, if you're to be helped, you must go to him. And there's nothing you can do for me, Dr. Adams. Frankly, Lawrence, nothing effective. Well, thank you for your your frankness. You will see him. I'll think it over. Hello, Stack. Is Miss Lawrence in? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Blake? I tell Miss Lawrence you're here. Bob, darling, I'm so glad you're back. I've only been away four weeks. How are you, sweetheart? I'm so worried. About what? About father. What's he been up to now? Well, that's just it, Bob. I don't know. 
He's locked himself in his room for weeks. He hasn't allowed anybody in to see him. Stack takes his meals into him, but he has to leave the tray in the music room. He says the door into the bedroom is locked and that Father won't come out until after he's left. Is he in there now? Yes, but the door from the music room into his suite is locked from the inside. Sounds in excellent form. Well, he hasn't touched the piano in weeks. William, bring my car around to the side entrance immediately and leave it there. I'll drive it myself. No. Darling. Easy, darling. You fainted. Bob, did you see what I saw? What are you talking about? Did you see his face? His hand? It was so large. It's your imagination, darling. The lights in there were strange, that's all. No, Bob, no. Maxine, she was in my waiting room. Maxine! Maxine, are you there? Maxine! 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 Yes, Marka. Weren't you expecting me? You knew I'd have to come to you sooner or later. To you, the one man with experience concerning the hideous disease of acromegaly. Oh, you had it cunningly worked out, Marka. So that I would be forced to come to you. To you alone. Then you would be in a position to dictate your own terms in exchange for that help. Terms which no doubt would involve my daughter Patricia. Oh, you were clever, Markov. Exceedingly clever. sufficient knowledge of the disease, not only to alleviate it, but to infect a person with it. You hold a decided advantage. So you see, Markov, I know you infected me with something that caused acromegaly. But how you made the disease develop so rapidly when science has proven that it takes years to reach this stage, I do not know, but you did. And now, Markov, I come to you, as you knew I must, to make terms. I've come to make terms. No, no, Lawrence, you, you overestimate my control of the disease. I've made an extensive study of it. Yes, that is true. But after all, I am only an apprentice. Yes, the devil's apprentice. Markov, you have set yourself up as a Frankenstein and created a monster. 
I am that monster. But if you remember, the monster destroyed the man who created him. That is what I'm going to do to you. Destroy you! No! Good work, Steve. Put them on that chair while I prepare an anesthetic. Calling all monster lovers, fright fans, and space travelers. Finally, there's a convention for you. Creatures Con is coming to the San Ramon Marriott Sunday, August 12th. Our seventh big year has more dealers, more guests, more fun than ever before. Here's just a sample of what you'll see at Creatures Con. Special tributes to 50 years of Planet of the Apes and the film that built a genre, Night of the Living Dead. Mega Chiller Theater, one movie, a whole host of horror hosts, the monster movie quiz, the experts answer the questions, and you win the prizes. The Creatures Con Costume Contest with a $100 cash prize, and more, much more than ever before. If you love classic horror and sci-fi, horror hosts, and monster kid stuff, then Creatures Con is the place for you. Creatures Con, Sunday, August 12th at the San Ramon Marriott. For tickets and info, go to CreaturesCon.com. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television. Coming up. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Uh, put him in the room of the surgery in the east wing. Could you be so inhuman as to infect him with that disease and order bargain for his daughter? Who gave you that idea? You left the dictograph open. I heard every word that was said. Forget what you heard. It does not concern you. I'll not forget. If you don't give up that insane idea of marrying Patricia Lawrence, I'll, I'll tell the truth about you. You would not dare. Oh, yes, I would. Does this mean that I have completely lost your loyalty? <laughs> you speak of loyalty. You don't even know the meaning of the word. You seem to forget all the things I've done for you. I've even risked my life for you, hoping that you might realize how much I love you, that someday you might return that love. But no, all I meant for you was just someone to help you attain your own selfish aims. I'm tired of it. I can't stand it any longer, do you hear me? I can't stand it! I'll never let you marry that girl. Never, 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 never! Maxine, you heard nothing. You heard nothing. You heard nothing. Now go to your work.
Go back in the other room. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? Creature Features, and we are watching The Monster Maker with Mr. Jason Regusta, filmmaker at large. So, you know, the monster in this film is, I, I don't, he's not very monster-like. He's more of just a monster on the outside. He is. I yeah. think the scientist is more of the monster. Yes, he's it's definitely a monster. There's no way to court a woman. No, no, it's a terrible way. It's no. Especially, there's no way to get a woman's hand in marriage. No. No. All right. So uh, your next project you were yes. telling me about on the break, it sounds absolutely fantastic. Tell us everything. Yeah, it's uh, it's called ZTV. Um, Z4. Zombie. Ah. Yes, we have zombies. It's a post-apocalyptic uh, zombie tale. It takes place after a zombie war. 
has been won in America. Now, unlike the last film, which is a short, this is a full length feature. Full feature, yeah. So it's gonna be like two hours long, right? It's about, currently it's, the script is 86 pages, so we're keeping it lean, but I think it's already is been- Is it still a page a minute? Um, it's supposed to be, but right. we'll see how that works out. It'll probably end up being over around 90 minutes. You so. know, I, I never liked that theory because one paragraph could say, the hero climbs a mountain and conquers the army. And yeah. you know, that could take days. And then other parts, you know, the picture says a thousand words. So when you're describing all the all the what you're seeing, sometimes that gets crunched. Speaking back of down. picture, you have a, a poster for I us. I do. And yeah. We're showing that right now. Yes. And this is this gives you a little glimpse of where we're going with this. That's right. So what what, what was the idea behind this? Yeah. So the central concept is that it takes place. It's a uh, there's a show called The Preserve with a Z in the middle. Right. Um, that is a um, post-apocalyptic. Uh, capital punishment reality show in this world and um, people who are convicted of war crimes during the zombie war are punished uh, publicly on the show and tortured and um, killed and turned into zombies so I take it this is something that would play after 10 p.m. because it would yeah. not be perfect for prime time it's it's it gets it gets messy right yeah right well this, this sounds absolutely fantastic when you start filming um, we are going to be shooting a proof of concept trailer uh, June 1st through the 3rd, and then uh, that will be followed by an Indiegogo campaign. And then after that, we're hopefully going to be shooting the feature. Fantastic. Well, we're going to we're going to give some some information on how to get more info on this uh, during the next segment. But uh, let's uh, let's finish up this film, Monster Maker, right? Yeah, got to see what happens now. Got to see, got to see. All right, we'll be right back with uh, Jason. And uh, right now, we're going to get back to the Monster Maker. Stay with us. Good morning, Doctor. The burlap cage was left unlocked last night. No, really? Why, well, he could have killed somebody. Yes, he could have killed me if 
Ace hadn't heard me scream and driven him back again to the cage. Oh, well, you are very fortunate. Very. And so am I. I, I could have lost a valuable assistant. How do you suppose the cage was left unlocked? Oh, I suppose the attendant was careless. I shall discharge him immediately. Look, Doctor. It's normal. You've discovered a cure. Oh, Maxine, it is marvelous. Maxine, this is, this is great. Do you know what it means? It means that I can ask my own price. I can... Yes. Oh, uh, by the way, Maxine, uh, I have a special prescription I want filled at Handcuff and Groves. Uh, you will go and see to it yourself personally. Over the phone? If I wanted it that way, I would have said so. Good morning, Stack. Good morning, Miss Lauren. Have you taken my father's breakfast into him yet? No, I haven't. You haven't? Why not? Well, as a matter of fact, your father isn't in. Isn't in? Where did he go? I don't know. He didn't say. When did he go? I can't exactly say. Sometime last night. Last night? Yes, miss. You mean he's been away all night and left no word? Absolutely none. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, Miss Lauren speaking. Uh, this is Dr. Markov. Now, please don't be alarmed, but your father came to me last night for a consultation. Father came to you last night for a consultation? Yes. I found it advisable to keep him here for observation. How, how is he? Well, he's quite comfortable now. Yes, quite comfortable, Miss Lawrence, I assure you. I'll be right over and pick him up and bring him home. I would uh, strongly advise against taking him home, Miss Lawrence. But why? I can't leave him there. Do you think I should take him to a hospital? I suggest you leave him right where he is, Miss Lawrence. You see, I have all the facilities here to take care of him in my sanatorium. Oh, I, I didn't know you had a sanatorium, too. I'll be right there. When Mr. Blake arrives, tell him I've gone to Dr. Markov, 1335 Cliff Drive. Dr. Markov, 1335 Cliff Drive. <laughs> yes. Very well, Miss. you to try hard to understand what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Try hard. Uh -huh. This is Dr. Markov. I can save you, Lawrence. I can cure you. Do you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. Good. Remember that I am the only one that can cure you, and I will cure you on one condition. Uh -huh. A very simple condition, Lawrence. Uh -huh. Your daughter is on her way over here now. <laughs> I want you to persuade her to be very agreeable to me. No. You can convince her that it is you she is coming to see. You can tell her that I am helping you. No. That is a very little thing to ask for your cure. No, 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 no! Very well. We shall see about that. Dr. Markov, please. Come in. Dr. Markov wants you to wait in there.
Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. The Russian sleep experiment took the lives of five test subjects, enemies of the state. It was a week-long human conditioning experiment that went horribly wrong. You can find out what happened to these human guinea pigs, as well as many other conspiracies, urban legends, and tales of terror at www.scarystorytime.com. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Alexa, Kindle, and other distribution streams of podcasts and videos. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. You are watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Thirteen thirty-five Cliff Drive. You That's said. correct, sir. I do not have to cure you, Lawrence, because nobody knows I have discovered the cure. Oh. Oh. Miss Lawrence is here. Miss Lawrence. Oh, it is a great pleasure seeing you again. Dr. Markov, how is my father? He's resting comfortably. Please be frank with me. What's the matter with him? It is a glandular ailment. How serious is it? Well, Miss Lawrence, I'm afraid it is quite serious, particularly in your father's case. Why particularly so in his case, Dr. Markov? Well, you see, uh, the peculiar disease your father is suffering from causes extreme enlargement of the extremities, the hands, feet, and certain portions of the head. In a professional pianist, it is fatal. That is to the continuance of his career, I mean. Not only are his fingers incapacitated for the intricacies of delicate performance, but his very appearance, upon which so much depends for public approval, is most uninviting. Dr. Markov, how does it happen my father came to you? I think you will find that your Dr. Adams sent him to me. Dr. Adams? Yes. Dr. Adams made exhaustive tests and in consultation with several eminent colleagues of his, diagnosed your father's case, and correctly so, as acromegaly. Acromegaly? I never heard of it. If you have, it is very rare. And since glandular disturbances are my special field and acromegaly my particular interest, your father was advised to consult me. With, with what results? I am anxious to cure your father, Miss Lawrence. Most anxious. Providing he is willing to obey my instructions through the letter. Do you anticipate any lack of cooperation on his part, Dr. Markov? Perhaps some. You see, Miss Lawrence, it is rather long and slow treatment. Naturally, a man of your father's nervous temperament 
will be impatient, obstinate, even rebellious on occasion. Progressively so, as uh, the brain begins to function more normally. You see, Miss Lawrence, your father is mentally incompetent. You... you mean he's... Oh, well, shall we say, uh, temporarily unbalanced mentally. The functioning of the pituitary, uh, being aggravated by pressure, makes the patient physically violent on occasion, and great care must be taken that he does not do violence to himself or to others. Dr. Markov, I'm my father. I can easily understand your need to do so, Miss Lawrence, and I would gladly save you the pain if I could. But I know you will not be satisfied unless you do see him for yourself. Besides, it will give you a basis for comparison. It will give you new hope from day to day as you see him improve. Where is he? Take me to him. In a moment. But remember, although he is still under a sedative, he might easily be aroused to violence. I would advise not to excite him, merely to reassure him that he will receive the very best of care, that you will see to it yourself personally, and that you recommend he do everything possible to cooperate with us. I will, I will. Take me to him. This way, Miss Lovett. You know what to do. Remember, Miss Lawrence, advise your father. Fullest cooperation in every way possible. Why is he strapped down? To prevent his doing violence to himself or to others, Miss Lawrence. Take them off. Take them off, do you hear? Well, that would be very dangerous. <sighs> Take them off, I say. Take them off at once. Stop that. Calm yourself. Calm yourself, Miss Lawrence. I don't care what you say. You can't treat him like a wild animal. It is a necessary precaution, Miss Lawrence. If he were to become violent, he would be extremely dangerous. I don't care what you say. You can't treat him like a wild animal. His recovery depends solely on you. What do you mean? I will cure your father when you decide to become my wife. Let go of me. I'll never marry you. Never is a long time. But some people do change their minds. Oh. 
Is he all right? Yes, he's just fainted. <sighs> Dr. Markov was the only man who could cure Dad. With him dead, there's not much hope left. Oh, yes, there is, Miss Lawrence. I'm familiar with the serum that the Markov has perfected for the cure. He has been using it to bargain with your father for you. He'll be all right. It might take a little while, but he'll be all right. Thank you. up the monster maker you know that didn't quite end the way i expected it was too happy no it was like mm. deus ex curima it was it was every every problem was solved and they had a nice moral if you're a scientist don't do bad things right that guy earned it he did yeah. all right well maybe we'll show this movie again in like 10 years or something so uh your stuff uh, you're still working on this this new project yeah which ZTV. is called ztv that's correct and it's a full-length feature film. It is, yeah, full-length. And we're going to be able to like, see this in theaters one day, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. That's what we're aiming for. But you've got a bit of work to do first. So much work. Tell us. What? Um, yeah, so uh, right now we're gearing up. I've written the script, right. so we have that. Um, yes, yes, the first step. And then uh, we're going to be shooting a proof-of-concept trailer um, in June. And that will be followed by an Indiegogo campaign and then hopefully that will be followed by shooting the feature you know i like the way films work now because before you'd have to genuflect in front of some big producer in hollywood and now you can just like ask your friends and internet friends for some help and you can create something just as good it's amazing i love it I lo yeah. this way music should have been you know i don't think that ever really happened with music it's happening I, now I might still need it is happening now. yeah musicians yeah. now have patreon accounts maybe i should go back to it yeah I never liked doing it though. No. Play music for money. You know, I'd rather I'd rather be a busker on the street. You know, play my guitar and have my case open. But uh, so okay, if somebody wants to find out more and to help yeah. with your thing, um, how did they find you? You can always find me on my website, jasonregusta.net. So that is J A S O N R A G O S T A dot net. G O S T A dot mm -hmm. net. Boom. Easy. Go visit his site. There'll be updates to uh, everything there. Updates, and there's links find. to Twitter and Facebook pages and all that Very on each important. project's Very important. page. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for letting us show your film. We've been dying to show this one. And uh, we're going to see you uh, when you're closer to releasing ZTV, right? Yeah, I'll be glad to come back. All right, wonderful. And as for you guys, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Do something interesting. Do it outside. It's going to be a nice weekend, I hear. And uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully, unless you watch that other station with that other show. But you don't want to do that. You want to watch us, don't you? Right. Have a pleasant evening. So, Jason, with this film you're working on, you're going to need people. Lots of them. Yeah. In front of the camera. Maybe you might need a musician like me. Nah.